Good morning, folks. This is your old pal, Mike Kelly 7 here. Atop the 2005 Road King Classic that I have dubbed Zuzu. Not the sexiest name for motorcycle, but hey. Mike Kelly and Zuzu on the road. On the road looking. Uh oh, don't get hit by a, a, a big bus. Um, what, are, what, are you, what are you doing there? You don't pull out in front of a motorcycle. I don't care if you're a school bus. I go fast. Anyway. <clears throat> I, uh, have been thinking about topics. <clears throat> and I think, uh, I came on one. Didn't sound right. I have hit upon the topic. How about that? That I think might be fruitful. Something that I could do over several videos. We'll see if it happens, uh, but here's where it started. Um, I was talking to somebody recently about a dilemma that I've had for a good seven years now concerning what to do with my life. <clears throat> when I was younger, I always had these big goals that were attracting me onward and sent something to live for. And then once I had basically uh, checked everything off that list, then I started to think, well, what now? And I didn't really have anything, so I began to despair that maybe I would just fade away. And I think part of that was due to the situation I was in, fading away especially. But uh, the person that I was talking to kind of very simply said, maybe you should just disregard the idea of checking things off of a list. I mean, you always pushed yourself to do these certain things that you had, but maybe you should just let ideas come to you organically. Instead of making a choice, this is what I want to do, and then going and doing it, see what you like over time. Don't don't go rushing into, you have to have a meaning. And so I uh, started to think, well, geez, yeah, maybe that was my problem. I was always trying to push myself to, to do something, and now I've done so many things, maybe I should try another another way of doing it. Just relax and see what comes up and what I want to do. So, I thought, well, geez, you know, maybe someday I could write. Because I, ha I have all these experiences in life, and I don't have a, a kid to impart my knowledge upon. So maybe I ought to write it. And toward that end, maybe this is, this is kind of like my note-taking. I could talk about some stuff that I would later maybe write about in a uh, book but I can vlog about it now, and you guys could get the first taste of this uh, stuff that I might write a book about someday. You never know. So, uh, I, I figured I'd talk a little bit today about uh, how I got into uh, the life that I did of educating and traveling and all that. And I have to pretty much go back to uh, uh, an important experience I had in the sixth grade where a teacher ridiculed me for being basically dumb and then made me stand up in front of the class because she made me cry and I was only 12 or 11 and when she made me cry she made me stand up in front of the class so that everyone could see me cry uh, to ridicule me even more which uh, I look back on and I think you know what that lady is a real winner anyway that pretty much started years of my thinking that I was not worth anything and that was compounded by the fact that my family was the only mixed race family in the neighborhood and so we were disliked because of that uh, this one lady friend of a friend of a friend of mine his mother she looked at me and she had this really mean looking face and she says I don't trust you you look all nice but I don't trust you Later on, looking back, I think it's because I had black people in my family. That's why she said that. So, suddenly, it all kind of came clear that a lot of the things that I experienced as a kid is partially because of racism. So uh, I went through school with uh, the lowest GPA possible, if you can imagine that. I had a 1.8 GPA in high school because I did not care at all about studying. All I cared about was my bicycle, my car, my girlfriend, uh, listening to music, watching Robotech, 
uh, eating whoopie pies. I mean, I was just being a complete hedonist you know, as a kid. And school was, you know, something that I had to endure. I had no sense of the future. As a matter of fact, a lot of times, I figured we won't even live to see it because we're going to have a nuclear war with the Russians any day. And then, uh, I had that epiphany in Paris, you may have seen in a previous video, where after my girlfriend dumped me, I was sitting underneath the Eiffel Tower and I realized that I wasn't really in Paris for her, I was in Paris for me, and that I loved it, and I wanted to make my life about learning and traveling. And it, it opened up a whole new world for me. When I got back from my senior year in high school, I was a new man. I started studying, I went to the library and I picked up a book of Shakespeare. The librarian didn't even know who I was. <laughs> I'd never been in the library before. Uh, what's I doing? And then from there it just kind of blossomed, you know. I kept raising my GPA from 1.8 to 2.8, 2.8 to 3.49. By the time I graduated from college. And I struggled my butt off to get through those things. I worked two, three jobs. I worked uh, 35 hours a week plus full time studies with no car. I had to take the bus and the train and ride my bicycle. Sounds like the Bill Cosby thing. I had to walk uphill with no shoes both ways in the snow. Not quite that bad, but almost. And I always found myself rebelling against the idea that everyone seemed to have of me that I was stupid. And that hurt for a long time. But now, you know, I'm 41. I've lived a little while now, and I feel this, this uh, bedrock of confidence that I never felt when I was younger for years. And now I, I kind of, I know a little bit of stuff. I've been, been around the block a couple of times. And it's such a nice feeling to not be insecure, to not think I'm worthless. And to and the other thing too is that I, I have made my life about helping people. And that is a great feeling every day. And I tell my students, of course, the longer version of the story that I just told today, a very short glossing over, but I tell my students of my history and how I got to where I am to demystify it for them so they didn't think, you know, oh, he's, he's some special guy, he got, he's in the club, you know. There is no club. You get there because you uh, work your butt off and you, and you don't take no for an answer. So that's uh, in, a, in a very short way how I got to where I am in life and I think it's something I could write down in a book in, in much more detail, of course. Ooh, I think I will park my motorcycle here. I think it's uh, C.D. Wolf was looking for my bike the other day in the video. He said, you're parking in a different place. Well, here I am. All right, folks. I'll talk to you later.